you know, I just, you know, I just obviously hit the record button and I asked Donnie, I said, is there anything you want to talk to me before we get into it? And Donnie says, I think you said, I love you. Well, I love you too, Donnie. You know, I, I, I think, you know, I think one thing as men in general, we, we are very hesitant to, to uh, tell other men how we feel about them. And I think, you know, it's funny about that. And I guess it's not funny, but it's kind of strange. I don't even know if it's true. I can't, I don't know the right terminology for it, but it's like this masculinity thing. Like we're afraid to tell men how we truly feel yet men realistically probably are the ones that need to hear it the most. Like if you're, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're real talk, like I'm, I'm a, I'm a man, I don't need that shit. You don't gotta <clears throat> tell me how you feel like feelings are for wussies or for women. I think that's just a big facade. And I think men, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I think men need it more than women. I think we're, I think we're, I think we're mentally I deep down. I, I don't want to use the word weaker because that's that, that, that doesn't, that's not the right terminology, but um, we are more, how about more fragile? I think, I think men are more fragile than women. What say you, Donnie Tuttle? Mm, that's a, that's a deep topic. Jeremy Todd starting right off the bat there. Uh, <laughs> we we I, love doing this, right? You, you know what it is though, is, is I think, I think we all want to be seen and, okay. um, and there, there is a reality that happens and, and, and the, this is this is anyone and everyone right that's out there doing it making it happen but but traditionally it's um it's men and in, in terms of what what culture has demanded and the culture culture has demanded uh, people to go out there and to set aside feelings set aside uh who they are what they are and, and our our culture rewards the thinking man now um that for a lot of us uh some of us are wired exactly how um, the rewards kind of happen um, majority of us are not. So what do we do? We, we learn to adapt. And, um, and so for me, uh, being heard, misunderstood, or, or not, not misunderstood, heard, understood, and in having you know, people express how they feel, um, is something that can bring pliability, flexibility, and life to the person who is almost like, who, who has been pushing into something Maybe in a place where he didn't belong, but um, um, yeah, I just, I just, I just think anyone who who puts himself into uh, onto a growth track, you're always going to find places where, where maybe it, it's beyond you, and and when you are beyond you, man, if you don't have someone telling you uh, they love you, you don't have someone telling you um, who you are and what you mean, uh, if you don't have that, good luck. Um, it's, it's, tough. it's tough. Yeah, it is. It, it's, it's like, you know, if you start at nighttime and it's pitch black on your on a, on a body of water and you start on the beach where there's people all around and then all of a sudden you start walking out the pier of life and you get so far out there, you, you, this is kind of how I feel sometimes. That's like, how it was this morning, by the way, it was uh foggy. You couldn't see 10 feet past, you know, so, but anyway, well, go ahead. Sorry. We're gonna, well, no, it's story. okay. We're, we're going to talk about this because I, I think I'm going to try and talk to you and let me come and see you here in, in the next month or so. Come I got some out. vacation time coming. I would, I would absolutely love that. Uh, that would be a blast. Uh, but I think sometimes as a, how I feel sometimes, um, I think that a, a true masculinity characteristic is being extremely vulnerable and open to your uh, you know, your inter, I don't know, your, your, your weaknesses, your vulnerabilities. I think that is a strength in itself. And I think sometimes when you go out on the pier of life and you start sharing these, I think it's like you said, to talk about a journey. I think that's where you, for me, I believe it's, that's why I enjoy talking to you. That's why I enjoy talking to other people on the show, because it's not normal in today's society to be vulnerable and be, I don't know, I, I be who we all truly are. I think that's harder to do than, than it is to be just a fall in line, just to be that yeah. guy to agree with everybody. And it's there's a lot of risk that comes to that too, because you get pushback. And I think that group of people that give you pushback is bigger and bigger and bigger. And the people that are on the same page as you becomes smaller and smaller, the further and further you get away from shore or get away on, on that pier, it gets more difficult, however, 
the more beautiful and how more clear it is as well, because, you know, you get away from the lights and you see the stars, you see uh, more opportunity. And that's hard, man. That's, that's yeah. really hard. And I, I struggle. Sometimes <clears throat> I walk on this pier let's, and I want to turn back it. around. All right, let's, let's normalize do it. it. Let's, let's make it normal. Yeah. I, I feel like, so, um, you know, as a, uh, so, so my, my background, it would be, you know, definitely the, a, a Christian faith, but, um, so I'm going to share something that, People may say, oh, it's, you know, it's fairy tale or whatever. <laughs> but um, whether it's true or not doesn't matter. The question is whether it's truth. And it says in the beginning um, that man and woman were able to walk in the garden and they were they were naked and unashamed. And uh, I think we have like the new show out, um, which, you know, it does pique the curiosity sometimes naked and afraid. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, yeah, yeah. this is this is not that I think I think I think the reality of, of being able to be um, to be seen and to be known and to be un, unabashed about it. I think, um, you know, the most masculine thing that I know of um, is is someone who's unafraid. And I don't mean unafraid like you're not afraid of new things because everyone has fear of new things. But I mean, unafraid of being yourself. I think that's the most masculine thing that you can be. And and that. Uh, it turn, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna melt some people and draw them near, and some people are gonna run from it because it threatens them. But, you know, that's the let's make that normal. It it does threaten them, and that, and I, you know, well, even I think threaten them is interesting because it does it, it doesn't threaten them like in a physical way. It threatens them to the to the comfort zone that they've been in their entire life. It it, it threatens their you see normal what's possible. thinking. Yeah, you see what's yeah. possible and realize that you haven't lived up to it. And that's, that's scary. Threat. Yeah, hundred percent. That's scary because I, I, you know, I we've talked about this a million times on the show. I, I think about that a lot. Like, um, you know, challenging the norm, uh, being being comfortable with who I am, being comfortable with challenging my self beliefs, and being open minded. And and you know, it's difficult. So you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you. Um, you know, for all the people that have listened to the show, again, this is Positive Set Podcast with my man, Donnie Tuttle, in the house. Donnie's been on, I think, four or five times, six times. I don't even know how many times he's been on the show. It's been a bunch. Uh, and I enjoy every conversation. And, you know, to go off on a quick tangent, Donnie, I don't know if you even know if you know that. I think you think you know this. I cancel all my guests. I think we talked about this a few weeks ago. because cancel I wanted... culture. Jeremy Todd is, <laughs> is heading up cancel yeah. culture. I am the, the lead of cancel culture. <laughs> but I canceled everybody because I was, I, I'm trying to get through every little tiny aspect of my life to figure out exactly who this complicated individual person is. In this own weird world that I'm in, the stuff I struggle with relationships and my self insecurities and success like i'm trying to eliminate all these things and peel back the layers of figuring out who i am the question for you donnie tuttle is a couple different I, I, several in one one question number one are i don't think you're there personally where you think you could say hey i've made it here because with one thing i know about you is you're always challenging yourself and asking yourself more questions of how to get to the next level but I, but but the other question, I, and you can turn this into the you know the next question. But the first part of the question is is when did this start for you? Like, what made you decide to go on this journey of becoming the new Donnie Tuttle? Because I think there's so many people out there that, are, again, around the world, listen to this podcast, say, well, I don't, I I think I want to go down this journey, and I think I have questions. But I don't even know where to start, and what does my journey look like? How do I do this? Where does it begin? What's my first step? So if you rewind the old Donnie Tuttle back in the day and you picked it whatever year you want to start, whenever that journey started to where you are now and what the next step for, for Donnie Tuttle is. Hmm. So I don't know. <clears throat> I guess maybe it was uh, it starts with the uh, with the lies that my parents told me you can you can be anything when you grow up. I'm kidding. Those, those weren't. That could be a, that could be <clears throat> the beginning too. No, but uh, ever since ever since I was a young kid, I just I just had a sense of uh, I think soul, maybe eternity a little bit, um, a belief that I was I was here for something bigger um, than just myself and. 
Um, and then I remember, <clears throat> excuse me, remember, um, you know, being in a church and hearing someone say, you know, God made you for a purpose. It's your, your job to find out, you know, why. And I'm like, okay. And, um, you know, to me, um, everything that I do is it's, it's, it's hide and seek, you know, um, it's just all, all, all I am is a seeker. And, uh, usually the things that, that I get to share with people are things that I'm learning myself. Right. And, um, asking myself. And I think that even being an asker is something that most of the times is not necessarily allowed because it doesn't fit within whatever. Um, I would say that I'm, I'm blessed to have, um, to have not really fit in, in a lot of places. Um, you know, growing up and, in, in, you know, just in, in school, it wasn't, um, it, I, I wanted to be one of the cool kids, Jeremy, but, um, cool, you know, cool I everybody. was, I thought I was cool, but I was just a part of my own cool little geeky, you know, you know, small yeah. group. Um, you know, um, in, in other places, you know, I can, I can say oftentimes, usually, um, I've, I've been someone that had either ideas that were misunderstood or not accepted. And, um, and to me, the, uh, so, so the blessing of having the pain of not fitting in, uh, you know, it's, it's been, a, it's been a good driver, uh, to say, well, well, who am I and what do I want and what do I believe? And, and, um, being able to ultimately, not even ultimately, but it, you know, to, to the place where I'm right now is just being able to settle and saying, um, you know, I'm a creator and I'm on a journey and I get to free other people to do the same thing, you know, as, as I'm doing here. And I can, I can make what I want and I can, I can have the things that I was afraid to have and I can do the things that I was afraid to do. Um, because ultimately before I would say, and I'm, I would say that's a journey, but just like coming from the place of not believing you are enough. That's something that always not you know, like, it's like not fitting in or not, um, um, not having, I don't know, just, you know, just not being a part of the cool club in any, any of the scenarios it, it, it does that for you. I think if you, if you are a part of these groups, sometimes you get trapped in, um, in what they call the golden handcuffs. Well, they have those relationally. Um, they have, um, you know, they have, I think the average life can be golden handcuffs, so to speak, uh, whether it is, uh, you know, it's a ho-hum marriage, a ho-hum family life, a ho-hum career, a ho-hum, you know, home or achievement or whatever, 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 you know, where, where I feel like that we were meant to um, contain and express and walk into um, just like euphoric joy um, to, to live in the place of, of peace. I, I do think that there's a reason why we want something and, and oftentimes it's because um, we're meant to have it. And so, I don't know, that's, that's, a, that's a long question. You said, how did I begin? It's just, I guess, realizing I was different and then realizing that, um, you know, I guess not even realizing anything, just asking the question continually, who am I? And what do I want? Who am I? What do I want? And do this different this year than it is last year. That's why I have a, I have vision boards all around me because it's always different. And there's some yeah. things that are consistent. And I don't Do know, brother. You, I just it's imagination half of it. You know. I had a conversation today. Like it's it's super cool. Like on like once a month, uh, once every three weeks, I've got um, you know my homies from my old neighborhood get together, and we're all pretty successful dudes. I mean, we're all still best friends. And I think that I think the meeting is called discussions of life. And before our discussion of life started today, uh, I was talking to one of my buddies and, and I said to him, uh, and I don't even know how it was like a three minute quick conversation. We start talking about uh, balancing of life. Do we do we ever it's like this, like, how do you balance the curse of feeling like you're never enough to with the balance of being extremely successful in life. Like if, if I wasn't as bad, if I was less balanced or if I was more balanced, if I had, if I thought I had figured out in life, would I be as successful as I am today? Um, vice versa. If I was even messed up, would I be more successful? How do you balance? Like if you're going to talk to a successful person, 
what does that balance look like? Like, how, does that exist? And do I always ask this question? I always think I always think to myself, like, and this is another quick comment I made to him. I said, you know, if you, if if we rewind, like, and if you Donnie Total rewind five years ago, and you say, okay, if I get to this point in my life, I will have quote unquote made it. Yet you get to this <clears> point in your life, and now all of a sudden you know you haven't made it, and there's a whole other rule. Uh, uh, rules of the game and you're like holy crap yeah. i have so much further to go do you ever get there <clears throat> like how what does that look like and do you ever want to get there i don't know man um, so yeah i'm what you're talking about is something that that i i um i i work with a lot in in my business um then it's something that's actually perplexed me since i started doing this right i think um when i left um and in I mean, I was successful and around successful people who were making, you know, um, good money or whatever. And and when you don't have money, you think that's the answer, right? And it is. It is. Yeah. It, I mean, it's it's it helps. But sure. um, but I, I went into coaching, and it's funny because the very, my very first client, and dude, I'm fresh out of nothing. Uh, I mean, I, I had I was more qualified than I realized. But whenever I I started with this with this company. And, um, and they do, they're like, okay, we're going to start piping new clients. And I got one, uh, the guy was like, he's like, yeah, I want to go from, I need to make like, I'm at 550, you know, is what I made last year. And, um, you know, I want to get, I want to get to 650 or seven. That's my goal. Like, get me to 650 or seven. And I'm like, you, you're hiring me to coach you to get to 650 or $700,000 uh, a year. And he said, yeah, I'm like, okay. I'll try. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That guy left. He left in a, um, uh, he, he lasted two calls and he, <laughs> he left me. It was, uh, it was, it remember was, his name. It was, it was I mean, you don't have to say it, but do you remember who it was? Uh, no, I could, I could recall it if I tried to, you know, but, um, it doesn't hurt, you know, <laughs> it did yeah. for a little while. I'm like, well, I'm not enough, you know, but the, but the, I, I think the thing that I see Jeremy is, so now I work with people who, who, are making that or millions. And it's like, it's the funny thing is I was, I was working, working with a guy who was making, you know, not 10 million, but you know, up there. And, um, and I'm like, do you remember, do you remember like you, like you thought you needed, you thought you needed to get to 1 million. He's like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, and now here you are thinking you need to get here. Do you realize you don't need to get anywhere? So the question is, is let's just stop this, this charade for a little bit. And my question is, is what do you want? Because yeah. if, if we're going after uh, feeling like we're enough, then that horizon is always, it's always gonna move. If you're going after another achievement, um, you're chasing the sun. It's, you're never going to get there. Now it's, a, it's, a, it's the pursuit of it is, um, it's not bad. So I don't, I don't have a, a hard time with people pursuing achievements and goals. What I will say though, is that, is if you're expecting, like we almost cast it like it's some version of heaven. Like, oh, when I get there, everything goes away. Yeah. Oh, my problems are solved. And it's like, no, that's, that's, that's not true. And if you, if, and what most of us, what I found in working with hundreds of um, entrepreneurs and business owners is that most of us will actually, the, the method we learn to move towards something is we learn to make ourselves, we put ourselves in pain so that will force us to do it. Like, you know, get up, you fat piece of crap. You know, it's like, you know, get up. So it's like, we hurt ourselves to get there. And um, and the method that most of these people of success have is, is they actually withhold happiness. Hmm. And so where, where I think the pursuit of perfection is something you're never gonna get to. I think happiness is something you can own today, no matter where you're at. And the way that you do that, Jeremy Todd, at least one of the ways that I found that you can do that is that rather than looking at that, whatever that next flag that is, you gotta go capture, or the next mountain you gotta take, instead of doing that and measuring yourself by that, of like, man, I'm not enough. I'm not enough to write this book. I'm not enough to you know, grow a team to 100 million. I'm not, like whatever it is, like you feel small compared, you know, when we, when we look forward in between that gap between where we're at and where we're going. Um, but I've been been listening a lot to a guy named Dan Sullivan, and he says instead of measuring the gap between where you're at and where you're trying to get to, instead look at where you're at and measure backwards. So yeah, you should measure, but always measure backwards. Like how far have I come? Yeah. How far? Like I and, and, and allow your. That's not even happiness. That's fulfillment of saying like, 
man, you know what? I am a, a joyful inventor today, or I, I've, I've been a generous artist today. I've been whatever that's on my vision board. It's like I was able to take one small step in that direction, and therefore, it's almost like it allows us to re-narrate our story to where the character, the hero, is enough. He's not lacking. He's actually, you know, he's heroic. And I think that, I think we need that. To, it gives us more punch, more power, more pop, more all of that in what we're doing. And so I don't know about balance, but I do know about about happy. And um, I think I think happy is something that we can, we can, we need to stop withholding and, um, you know, embrace it, take it. You, you know, say, wait for, someone, wait for someone else to give you, a, stop waiting for someone else to give you a trophy and just, you know, it's yours. When you say you're the hero of your, so you, when you say hero, hero of your own story, right? Yeah. So when you look, hypothetically, you're writing the book of your life. And I think yep. it's a good analogy to kind of look at, like, you know, sometimes, you know, and, and, and I'm glad I'm just kind of talking this out and like walking myself through this because, you know, We've talked, man. I've, I've got all kinds of major insecurities. We all do. But again, part of the podcast, I love being vulnerable and straightforward. But, you know, when you, when you look at the story of, of my life or Donnie Tuttle's life and how it starts is so different than the way it's going to finish. You know, any story you read, it always starts out, you know, sometimes it starts out okay, joyous, and then it gets a little tough, and then it gets a little bit better, and then it gets a little tough. And you always look for the end of that story um, to be that, um, you know, the like you said, the hero of your own story. Man, that's a, you know, if you actually like sit back and think about that, just the, the words itself, hero, hero of your own story. Like no matter what tragedies you've gone through your life, no matter what your story is, you have the capability to be the hero, to pull yourself out, to be the example, to be that light uh, for yourself. Like, I'm not trying to tell, like, you know, be the light for everybody else, because typically if you're the light for yourself and you are the hero in your own story, you'll be the light uh, for many other people that are, you know, that are always watching. You don't even know they're watching. But man, that's that's pretty deep, bro. Like, I, I know we kind of gloss over that. We've and and and, and, I, and I appreciate you mentioning that. But man, that's a that's a powerful word and just powerful story. Because I think if you're if you listen to this podcast, no matter, you, no matter where you are in the world, and you are down, like you are at the bottom of the barrel, you're struggling, whether it be financially, whether it be mentally. The story the stories don't end like the end. Like your story is over now. Like you have the opportunity to be not only the main character, but be the hero of your story. You you have that capability to be yeah. that superhero. And man, that's real. That's that's a real life story. That isn't watching the, uh, you know, the, I don't watch movies, but the maybe the Avengers or the Fantastic something or something. I don't watch that stuff. But, but man, that's a real possibility. And I think for people listening, like no matter where you are mentally, you still have an opportunity to write the end of the story. Now, it's not going to be easy. And sometimes, you know, you've written a bit, book and I've written a book. You don't know where the next chapter is going to come from, but the best thing you can do is just start writing and allow things to happen to you instead of stop. The worst thing you do is just stop. Yeah. Uh, but there, the more you write, the more opportunities come up. It's interesting um, that you mentioned that. I, was, I, would, I would share something. There's a project I've been working on. Um, I was going to, I thought I had a, well, hold on. I do have a, an actual. If you're wearing shorts, I'm in the Midwest and it's 30 degrees outside. <laughs> no, but no body surfing up here close to. I'm damn. I'm two hours, two and a half hours from Lake Michigan. You're not body surfing in Lake Michigan. I promise you that. So there's, there is. Um, it's interesting to, to, because um, you know we're 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 dancing around something that is. Um, it was codified by a guy named Joseph Campbell, and I know I share about this every time. Oh, I didn't put it on my map. Every time I ever talk with anyone on your, uh, almost any show is the hero's journey. And, um, you know, the idea is that there's a, a hero called to action who usually is reluctant because they don't think they're enough. Uh, then they meet a guide and the guide provokes them into action. Uh, Jeremy, you've been a guide to me. You provoke me into Thank action, to leaving, to leaving a place of safety, to go do something that took more um, colonies to go do. 
Um, and then they and then they find a you know their special power or some you know Excalibur type of a thing. And as they make the decision to jump into and step into the unknown, I and mean, that's exactly what it is. It's the unknown. Um, there, the, it's almost like they're going into whatever realm you would say. They're climbing the mountain. They're 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 going into the midst, of the darkness of the sea, or wherever, and they're pulling something back to to our realm that didn't even exist before. And, uh, and they're not doing it alone. And as we, as we step out into our journey, it's unexplainable, but heaven and earth come to meet you. There are companions along the way. Luke Skywalker didn't rescue the galaxy a long, 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 long time ago alone. He did it with Chewbacca and Han Solo and you know Princess Leia and C-3PO, right? He had, you find friends along the way. And anytime you step into anything boldly, it's not just you, and that's the that's the hard part that that, that most of us we, we think we're stuck in our solitary, but we're not. You know, we have things like the Positive Side podcast that acts like a a, a bit of a mentor, a bit of a guide, but also we have other people who are on the same path, and some of them are there for a long time, and some are there just for a chapter, and but we have the, the, like it's it's we're, we're not alone, we're not alone in this thing. One of the hard things about that is you know sometimes i i have i i, I agree with you 100 percent that we are not alone within this but let's let's play devil's advocate uh for somebody that's been through tough times that and and again i i i use myself with a grain of salt this isn't all me but i'm just you know relating to more people that have been through tough stuff and sure. trying to, to have the conversation with what you're talking about um the people that may be coming to their life, how do you know who to trust? How do you know, like, how do you know this person is a guide? How do you know truly, because if, you know, for people that have been beat down and they've been burnt, what do you, like, I know for, for me, when I think about this, I, I, I'm blessed. I have got, like you said, you have been a major guy in my life. Like I, I, I strive to be Donnie Tuttle. Real, I mean, really, like that's who I strive to be as not, you know, business aside, like business. I mean, you're killing in business. That has literally nothing to do why I strive to be Donnie Tuttle. I strive to be Donnie Tuttle for the person that you are, like the genuine human being that Donnie Tuttle is. I Thank love you, well, I love you as a friend. I mean, I love you. I, I mean, there's so many reasons you're a big part of my life. But a lot of people don't have Donnie Tuttles. A lot of people have people that think they can't distinguish who is that right person in their life when they come. How, like, how do you work your way through? How do you know I mean, who I, that person I, I, is? I don't. Is I don't, there a way? I don't know. I mean, so I, for me... I, so I'm more about the questions than the answers, Jeremy Todd. I think that if you're asking those questions and you're on the right track, I think um, I think the reality is is that the one thing that I know is a stopper of every hero. Um, or what does every hero face in the old in the old tales? Right, I have a sword behind me. What's a hero going to face? I mean, face some dragons, doubt, some right? self doubt. Yeah, yeah, some yeah dragons. So, yeah. So our, so our dragons are usually come in the form of doubt, fear, unbelief, guilt, and condemnation. You know, something something of those varieties are usually what kind of gets in our way, and what what I would say is that um, is that is 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 my true me and your true you is someone that can make decisions out of love, and faith, and belief, and hope. And so when you're when you're looking at whatever scenario, I'm not saying this isn't like blindly like I hope someone at the store will give me a hundred dollars. I'm not like, I'm not like, this isn't like random stuff. I'm just, I just mean like when you're, when you're in a place and you're making a decision, you're looking at, at something. The question is, is like at that moment, what, what does your inside say? What's, what does your spirit say? What do you, what are you hearing inside? Are you, are you feeling peace and joy with this whole thing? Or are you, are you feeling um, like it's a no? Now the one, those are either of those are great. Here's what, here's the one that's the big inhibitor. It's this invisible insidious boogeyman that we let sit yes. on our shoulders and go through our lives because this guy goes unchecked and we don't know that that this is like like this has been kind of holding us in our cage all along so my thing is is i've just made a deal with myself i'm not ever going to decide anything based on fear ever never 
right? Uh, the company that you and I both worked for, it's funny, there was, a, there was an episode where <clears throat> um, my, Trying to, trying to, trying to know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to know if I can. I this see, I see the gear started. It's all good, Brian. It's all. It's good. not. Well, it's not. It's not. It's not me. It's there's there's another individual, and um and there were there were there were fears, and so it's like, well, if you go here, then this and this and this might happen, and so all of a sudden it was like these weird. This it was this weird story that was way out of character of anything, that um that I was, and it, part of it had to do with like you know you're gonna look like all these people and look like you're in a cult and you're gonna you know like it was all and like you're gonna leave us here and do that there and it was like the, that was a real thing that we went yeah. through now here we're in our 30s or 40s or whatever but yet like when we're talking about it like you'll know when you're facing fear when you sound like a freaking seven-year-old little oh, kid. That's a great point yeah okay that's a so great that point was there and what we said we, we we were like i was just going i'm like listening i'm like huh i said it, and it was it was the, the question of like okay so what you're saying is, is, is that fear is going to decide this for us. And um, the answer was, um, oh my God, that is fear. The heck, that's not what I believe. That's just what I felt for a second. That's not what, that's not what I believe. And so we, we were able to put that aside and decide out of love and trust and faith in the positive. Now everything worked out good, but it doesn't mean that that's like my, it wasn't my forever place. I guess the idea is though, Jeremy, is that when you're taking that next step, it's being able to, it's like there's more in you that you can trust yourself with that. And even if it's a mess up or even if it doesn't work out, it's there for learning. You yeah. either win or you learn, but you can you can move on. You can at least live with yourself that you trusted yourself, you trusted your gut. By the way, they that's one of the that's one of the um the regrets of the dying, they say, is that I did like it's like number three, I didn't trust my gut enough. I would have mm. I would go if I could go back in time, I would trust my gut, I would trust myself. Yeah. More. And so that's the that that's all I have to say about that. Well, <laughs> you are exactly right. And two things I want to uh, talk about. Well, I mean, well, the first thing I'll say is that I wrote this down and I think you will know you are living in fear. And I put down, you, you sound like you're a seven-year-old. It's very interesting that because when, when I, you sound like a child, you said child, but um, it's very interesting because if you take that 5,000 foot view and you say the things that you're afraid of, but if I told, if someone told me that, it was my son telling me that or my daughter telling me that I'd be like are you what are you afraid of yet right we take we put different boundaries in ourselves when it's actually a, a personal thing one of the things i've really been i've been working on and that and and i i i need to do a new vision board i've got the one vision board on uh you mentioned vision board and when you whenever you talk my mind just uh you know just goes in different directions and you were you mentioned you got several vision boards i'm going to do another vision board and i think one of the things that one of the things I've been really struggling with is this self doubt, this um, um, self sabotage, this uh, this just this belief. And I and I'm curious if I'm real and I'm very honest with myself. And when I do my new vision board based on where my thoughts are, and I don't think of anything else, but I compare it to my other vision board. What does that show with my mentalities of where I've been, where I'm going? And then if that's my reality of where my true, like for lack of better terms again, naked vision is, if it, if, if, if it comes across in my new vision board of self-doubt, of self-sabotage, of things that I subconsciously recognize, because I think that's one of the beautiful things about a vision board is you, you put things on there that you subconsciously, uh, well, you, you, you consciously don't realize it, but you subconsciously do. What does that look like visually and then taking that 5,000 foot view and how do I get around that? How do I get past this? And how do I grow as a better person? Um, you mentioned a little bit ago, you know, I always think about our conversation when we had at Dodger Stadium. Um, we, we, it was a great conversation. It's one of those life altering conversations that I will never forget. And it was just, it was very, free, uh, non-committal, um, open-minded, uh, vulnerable. And man, like I need more of that in my life. And, and I think that, and I know I'm just wandering on with my conversation with you. Um, but if I can tie all that stuff together, um, I think I am the, I'm subconsciously, 
I tell you or tell people I coach all the things that I should be doing myself. It's like this, you know, you tell me something that you're doing and I'm like, well, Donnie, you shouldn't be doing that. That's crazy talk. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. Why would you ever think that about Donnie Tuttle? Yet I'll tell myself, Jeremy, you, you can't do this. You know, you're never gonna, you're never gonna uh, amount to shit. And I say that like, again, facetious, facetious, facetiously, whatever the word is. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people do that. I think most people do that. It's, it's, it's do as I say, not as I do, right? It's that old, that old saying, but man, it's very eye opening when we had these well, open conversations <clears throat> to, to change that. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's a lot to, there's a lot in what you just now said. Um, and I, and for me, I like, I would, I, I, I would ask, like, it's like, there's somewhere along a line where it's almost like we were, we were programmed to not want. Or like it was a bad thing. Like if you want this, like if you get it, then what about the rest of us? It makes us feel bad, or there's not enough for us. So like we're t we're 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 taught that, and a part of it is like by good nature of people, right? You have a family. We have we have do we have eight kids, and there's no way like that being allowed past you know eight o'clock nine o'clock is a is a fit for my home. That doesn't mean it's evil to be loud at nine o'clock. Right, go go yeah. to a Latin family and like, <laughs> dude, they're like they're dancing and eating at midnight. That's I, I love yeah. that, but that's that can't exist in my home. And so so we even cultured our children a certain way that that worked for us, but does, it it may not necessarily be what brings them freedom, you know, in the future. And, and I, I guess I say that as like a as a yeah. way of saying like in a, even in a benign way, we can be taught that it's not okay to want what you want. And so, um, so, you know, we did this whole crazy, oh, travel around the world, that's so great. And then everyone, you know, like that's, that's an inspiration, right, to people or whatever. But it's also easy to get trapped into that of like, well, now I got to keep traveling so I can keep inspiring. And so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, and so if you were to look at us now, we've chosen a different path over the last two and a half, almost three years. Right. And, 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 and that took as much courage as doing the other one. Yes. Now, the other one is the most interesting because it seems crazier. But what we're doing now is, is you know, I think, I think everything I do is always going to have a, a flair of crazy to it. But it's, but it's um, like, like not judging myself and comparing like, oh, like, look when we were conquering the world and we were doing so many great things. And like, I don't look back and think that I, I look back and I'm in love with the me that was there. But I also love the version so of me good. that's now. And so there's a new me that's here now that wasn't there before. And I want things from my vantage point now that I didn't want before. And there were things I thought I wanted before and I got them and I didn't want them. And that was okay for me to get them and give them away. It's not, it wasn't some hollow, shallow victory. I was able to, like you see in the movies, like, oh, I wanted this all along and I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, it's like, it, was, it wasn't that. And so I think to be able to, to come through these things and to trust yourself and to say, man, it's okay to want whatever I want. And I'm, I'm looking at do my vision board. Here's, I don't know if you want to see my last two. They're sure. different. There we go. I mean, like, not that it's going to do anything for the listeners, but. I have a gigantic YouTube following of 237 people, so we're all good. Dude, I want to, <laughs> I, I, I want Jeremy, you know, like you, they look similar because I bought both yeah. frames at Walmart. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you know, I have, this is like, I check everything almost off on this and except for we don't have the home. And and we didn't go to Harry Potter World. Is that you two sitting on the beach on there in each other's arms on there in the corner? <laughs> yeah, it is. And that one made it over to this one. It's on the oh. right You can't see that. So a, a, a couple other things made it there. And I, I'd love to get down to 200, 200 pounds again so, and, and take my wife back to Miami Beach. That was 28 years ago when we were wherever that <laughs> so is. So good. Right here. That's so, so good. But um, but to me, the most important thing on here is this right here. Like these things, like I'm, like I want to be a generous artist. I want that's that's a that's a part of me that I'm trying to. I love that. Um, embrace. You know, like and and now whenever I do that, like I'm daily when I I every day I count my. I, I've only been doing it for eight days in a row now, but every day I've been counting my three wins and my three plans for tomorrow, and and usually if I if I did anything to be a generous artist, dude, that's a win. Even like. I sent something to someone when sent a text message to someone sent a letter to someone I you know I uh, I just now prepared something I plan on like that's those are all wins and then this by the way this is this is one I'm actually most excited for I want I want to, gifts. yeah and that's a that's an Amazon truck obviously and then on you can't tell but that's my grandma coffee 
and in my <laughs> life for every every single birthday or holiday I've ever had, wedding anniversary, dude, she's always sent me a card with money in it forever. Mm. And so uh, so I want I want to be Grandma's on Prime. And if I can do 500 meaningful gifts. Grandma's on <laughs> Prime. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's can, so good, bro. That's if awesome. I, if I could do five, if I could do 500 this year, that that makes me feel good. Does it make me win in business? I don't know. I don't know. And yeah. so you can go conquer and make a million. You know what? That actually makes me feel badass, dude. And I feel like and the guy that does that, I love him. And if there's someone else out there like that that you know, I want to meet him. I yeah. want to be the kind of guy I'd like to meet. And yeah. that's all I'm doing is I just I just I'm trying to become that guy and I am. But I'm not it's not like a static thing. There's always like a new a new level and there's new deficiencies that I have to face and I'm like, "Oh god, I never I didn't own that one before. I was too afraid to look at that. I was naked and ashamed, you know? Yeah. And now it's like, I'm not ashamed. I don't care. Oh, Damn, Donnie, it's so good, man. If I could rewind, the, well, I'm going to listen to this. I'm personally, I don't ever listen to my podcast. I'm going to listen to this podcast again and again, because if I could rewind the last five minutes of the things that you said, man, dude, it's just, it's, it's everything that I, that I feel, but I haven't given myself permission because like you said, like um, I've done all these things. I've traveled, I've done this, I've done that. We did the, you know, you were in Mexico and you traveled every three months with all the, all the kids and, but you don't do that anymore. And, but you don't have to try and keep up with that. Like, that's not the persona you're living up to. That's not. And I think about that with me. Like, I, I, I always feel like I have to try and keep this persona. Like, and again, not saying it's bad or indifferent, but like, I don't need to compare myself to the version of me that was two, three years ago to try and keep that up. I am perfect the way I am. And I'm going on this new journey um, that I love and it's exciting, but I don't, I haven't accepted that, that that is okay for me to be this new person in my life because I, I want to hold back and compare it to my old self. And it's, that's not, it's not sustainable, but it's only, it's almost, Again, if I go back to self-sabotage, it's holding me back Dude, to be a, a happier being, version of me. Imagine being a woman who's in her 40s and she's thinking about when she was, oh, it was beautiful when I was in my 30s. I don't know why I was so sad when I was in my 20s. And God, I would, you know, like, I, like they want their teenage body. It's like, that's just like, but we do that. Yes. When, when, now, when you had that body as a teenager and you weren't happy with it, you wanted it to be better. But here you're on your 40s or 50s, you're like, dang, I just should have been happy with that. And God. you spend 50 years of bandwidth carrying that weight that's just bs it's just all it is that's something that we put in our in, in front of us to, like you said self-sabotage it keeps us safe it keeps us from taking those big risks yeah right and in a way i guess that's good but in a lot of ways man like life is on the other side of the risk life is on the other side of the sure on the other side of the line uh, but but sometimes that risk just doesn't look like a risk just because you were doing the high you were on a high wire act a year ago doesn't mean that that's what it is now. I mean, dude, I'm I'm going through a phase where, um, just just like these different relationships I'm trying to capture. And if you have kids, your world always changes. It's For always sure. a different ecosystem. And then you know you have teenagers or you have grown ups and you have they're in my business, they're out of my business. You're 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 you know I have I have a aging parents and it's like all of these things are these different dynamics that help to reveal another aspect of me to me. And, and all I know is like I want to be the me that I love, dude. And I do want to like, and I can love other people along the way. I will love other people along the way. And the reality is, is I got tired back whenever I was coaching at said space where you and I were at, where I just felt like I was telling people to do things that I would never do. Yeah. And I just don't want to live any of my life that way. And I've, and I've been that way. Like that's, I'm going to, I'm going to do, and I'm not going to do it all perfect. And we have, we have, um, we have someone who's kind of grown and, and kind of taken on a spouse. And it's like, all of a sudden we're getting like, you get these criticisms of like, dude, you think we were the Beverly freaking hillbillies, like how, uh, how we come <laughs> off, you know, with yeah. people that's like, this is this new challenge. And it's like, you know, I'm, I can still allow them to misunderstand me and still love myself and them in the process. I'm big enough to do that. I don't have to go that's into awesome. some little cut down battle. It's just, it's just, it's inspiring it's, brother. It's so inspiring. Choice. And, and, Man, like if if someone needs what someone needs to do, and and they need to go back and take all the Jeremy Todd, Donnie Tuttle podcast, and then like <laughs> like take this montage of where it's been and where it's 
going, where it is now and where it's going. Man, dude, it's so exciting. Donnie, you and I got to figure out something to do together, man. Like it, um, I've got Come time in over. April. I'll teach you a little body surf. We'll get out in the water. Well, I've got time in April and um, I've kicked around ideas. I'm like, well, I'll go. I thought about going to see Dave Berlin out in, in Vegas. I love Dave. Dave's great. I thought about going to Mazatlan, Mexico. because I got a buddy down there. I thought about going to see my brother in Boston. I haven't been able to really figure it out, but maybe, maybe this is the answer. I come and see Donnie Tuttle get into the ocean a little bit and just, just enjoy some good company, man. Like not, not to say that I'm going to like, Hey, Donnie, spend all your time with me. I don't, I don't need that, but I haven't seen you. When was the last time I saw you physically saw you? It's been, um, it's been a while in person. Man, it's been probably it's been in LA. Nice. It's probably been LA. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe but we got to yeah, figure was, this out. Actually. It was LA. Well, Donnie, I appreciate everything you're doing for me, man. Like uh, selfishly, I uh, completely, totally selfishly, I love having the show because I can have you on my show and I can have these conversations that I get so much out of and they help me so, so much mentally, physically, growth oriented. I mean, they're just so impactful for me, man. And, and again, brother, I just can't thank you enough for being my friend. And, and, you know, we started out the podcast saying, I love you, love me. I love you, brother. I, I really do from the bottom of my heart. You are one of the most important people in my life. And uh, I mean that from the bottom of my heart, we talk, but every couple of weeks, maybe every three weeks, yeah. it's always a yeah, quick or, phone or call. Something, something comes up. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's always that man. And our friendship will be like this for the, for the rest of our lives, because, um, it's that impactful, man. When, and, and, uh, like I said, I, I don't know what life would be without you, but I'm just glad you're a part of my life. So for all the people out there that want to learn a little bit more about Donnie Tuttle and work with Donnie Tuttle, where do people go? Oh, well, I mean, just go to DonnieTuttle.com. Uh, you'll get hit with like, there's something that if you go to D-O-N-N-I-E, Tuttle, T-U-T-T-L-E.com, just go there. Um, there's some, you know, fun videos. There's a free book. Um, I believe I have, um, I believe I have something on there for those of you who are doing vision boards. If you want to do a really cool one, like the one um, I just now picked up, you can do those on Canva. And um, like I've done my last three or four of them on there. And it just, I feel so proud of all of them. And it feels, you know, it just feels professional and beautiful. And, and you like to look at it and you're reminded and just you have a compelling reason, hmm. to, you know, to do something today. But um, yeah, DonnieTuttle.com. And brother, I'm, I'm the same, man. I think, I think today would probably was just, it's just probably for you and me to ramble. Hopefully, I don't. I don't great, bro. Listeners with this one, but um... I, I think it's the best show we've ever had. I honestly, <laughs> honest to God, I believe that, bro. Like there was so much knowledge packed within this forty minutes show, whatever it is. I don't even know how long it is, but so much knowledge, so much real talk, and there. But there's so much stuff can people can take out of this podcast to say, wow, I can I can implement this now in my life and make a big difference in it. And that's what's powerful so. about this conversation. So. Yeah. Well, um, I'm just another brother on the on the journey, dude. I'm, <laughs> I'm not like, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not a guru. I'm not, you know, any of those things. I'm just another dude on the same journey. And if, if we can, you know, if, if, uh, if I can, if I, if I can point to the direction of where the, you know, where the water is or where, where I saw food or whatever, then hopefully that helps, you know, so the next person walking down the path. Well, I appreciate you jumping on the show. I know we were going to do it a day later, but I appreciate you making the time for me. I, I know you always say that too, but I know it's it's you're busy, and I, I, it means a lot to me that you jump on the show. Uh, again, for all the people around the world, uh, you know, reach out to Donnie. Uh, I find videos of Donnie Tuttle on YouTube. <laughs> I love those videos. I, I listened to one you carrying the water the other day, which was great. I love that one too. I make my staff watch it. So everybody out there listening, find Donnie Tuttle. Find him. Go to DonnieTuttle.com. Find him on social media subscribe to him, reach out. I, I'm personally going to reach out to the vision board thing you're talking about on your website. I'm going to do that within the next couple of days. I'll or get if, that done. Or if you go to my YouTube, you can find that. I don't really know. I, I honestly, and I need to, I need to get up to my, I need to get my YouTube stats up like, like Jeremy Todd. They're impossible. Um, they're, impo they're impossible for like, me, but we'll like get them five up. subscribers. No, I've won it, man. I did something. <laughs> I do want to impact people that way. So I'm watching you. We'll figure it out together, my friend. And uh, for everybody around the world, like I said, I, I, um, I mean, from the bottom of my heart, you've got greatness within. Like always, this is The Positive Side.